Hi right, guys, welcome to Formula 1 News. The Dutch Grand Prix is here this weekend and big development on the Sergio Perez and Dana Ricciardo front with Helmut Marco confirming beyond any doubt that Liam Lawson will have a drive in one of the Red Bull cars for next season. That means that they go from four drivers and especially because Max Verstappen is staying absolutely after what Mercedes have seemingly confirmed behind the scenes over the last few days. Someone's got to go. Is it going to be Ricciardo? Is it going to be Perez? How quickly can we expect development on this to occur? Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I greatly appreciate it. These are the trailers fees for the Dutch Grand Prix weekend. This is the Constructors Trophy on the left hand side which looks like this from another angle which is absolutely beautiful and of course as it stands Rebel are in the lead of the Constructors but that may not last too much longer. Quickly on Ferrari, they over the summer holidays, summer break, have upgraded their wind tunnel. They've renovated it. So um, you know, here we go, Ferrari Copium officially back on the menu but um, they've created a new belt. The conveyor belt has been replaced with a new innovative rubber material which will allow more advanced aerodynamics research. So um, they go on to discuss some further things in the article, are basically saying that they've got an upgrade on the wind tunnel and maybe that's going to make a difference, maybe it's not. But um, you know, I guess time will tell on that one. The feeling is their latest upgrades, what they work on from now, for next year, for the 2026 car, will probably be at least slightly more accurate than maybe they might otherwise have been expected to be. So very interesting to see if that really helps them going forwards, improving their wind tunnel during the summer break. But they've obviously got to try and still bring as many upgrades as they can Ferrari because McLaren have done so and right now Vassar says effectively they're playing defense right because this weekend they don't have any upgrades yet maybe in Monza they're going to bring a couple of things I wouldn't be surprised if they do it's Ferrari at Monza you know how that tends to go but um this weekend will be about damage limitation it seems for Ferrari while McLaren Mercedes and most certainly Max in the Red Bull will be fighting it out at the front of the field media day of course getting underway today as well and this was very interesting from Oscar Piastri confirming how he picked up this broken rib. What they said is that there was some sort of pressure point in his seating arrangement that was putting pressure on his rib without them really realizing it. And at certain tracks, it was really expanding on that and he actually ended up cracking his own rib just from driving effectively, but with the seating configuration as it was. Once they realized this, it's now healed up and they've changed the configuration so it's no longer been affecting him, but I thought that was a kind of remarkable thing and an injury to occur not like he crashed and broke a rib. He literally just, you know, created this from the downfalls generating through the corners, putting excess pressure on that part. And um, eventually, you know, the, the situation obviously came to a four. Mercedes, by the way, they're expected to announce Kimi Antonelli. This is seemingly a done deal. And of course, we'll come on to what that means for the Red Bull situation in the coming minutes. This was interesting as well from Russell because they say, Mercedes, there were a few factors that were in play with the fact that Russell ended the race one and a half kilograms underweight. Yes, the tyre wear was higher than expected because he did the one stop, which um, most others did the two stop. There was higher than anticipated plank wear and Russell's own weight loss, which maybe was higher than expected, contributed to the circumstances. So, um, you know, you sweat a lot in these situations, obviously. But Russell actually did say, I'll mention this in a second, that um, he knew before the race he was potentially going to be a bit underweight. So um, he obviously weighed himself before the race and was like, yeah, okay, I'm a little bit on the lower side here, which isn't ideal deal probably at that point you know was too late to eat a steak I think that's even what he said he was like at that point yeah I couldn't eat a steak or something so you know probably not the best pre-race routine anyway so I think Russell realized and clearly on some level Mercedes realized that there were some mistakes made in their preparation here for this race and like I don't think it was like deliberate attempts to cheat to win from Mercedes it was merely poor operational management on their ends and um, you know ended with Russell getting disqualified and the one two going away if they can do a one two in Zandvoort in front of the Max Verstappen home crowd that will be an entirely different statement and a track that did suit the W13 quite well but um you know I'm not convinced that Mercedes are going to be as much of a threat this weekend as they were before I think the McLaren should be in a pretty good spot time will tell Russell does say though they're going to play around with the floors so um, they have the new floor which they brought to Spa but eventually they didn't use in Spa so Hamilton will run the older version that they used in Silverstone they'll then compare that and they also used it in Spa but you know what I mean they tried to bring the new one to Spa but it didn't initially work and Russell will use the newer one instead so um, 
um, you know, and then he says that they will probably proceed with both, but the first session they want to kind of compare and contrast the two of them. So that's pretty interesting to hear about as well. Max Verstappen, he was, of course, giving his comment on the weekends. We saw the other day that Kyle Larson said he's a better all-round driver than Max, and Max is like, that's fine, I don't really care. Fernando was even asked about it, and he said, hey, Max is pretty good in GTs as well, so um, he could put up a fight against Kyle Larson, but I bet that he's good in everything, but still, he's not as good as me. In F1, I accept that he's the same. So, you know, cool words, I thought, from Fernando, saying, hey, Max, you know, fair enough. In Formula 1, you might be on the same caliber of driving as I am, but in other series, I would still get the better of you type thing, and, um, you know, of course, responding to Kyle Larson on some level. The other thing that certainly Max Verstappen fans will be interested to know is that he was asked the question, it is 200th race weekend, would be a great time to win again for Max, of course, Dutch Grand Prix, home crowd, 200th Grand Prix at a time where he kind of doesn't need a win, but a win would be really nice for Max just to say, all right, look, the championship's mine. Don't worry about it, guys. I've got it under control. And the Red Bull, still a very fast car, certainly in the hands of Max. Is it going to be fast enough? That's a question. And Max was asked, you've been at 200 races. Do you see yourself here in another 200 races? Now, 200 races at the current rate is pretty much eight years, isn't it? So um, that would put Max from 2024 up to 2032. And he would at that point be, you know, in his middle or so 30s, which is not impossible to drive at that point. Obviously, Hamilton is, you know, nigh on 40, Alonso 42, right? We've got other drivers in their mid to late 30s coming up on that. And Max, if he wants to, could, but he makes it quite clear that he won't be, right? He just not intends to race 400 Grand Prix, says that he's got other stuff that he wants to do instead, and makes it clear that he is past halfway, maybe well past halfway. There's been a theory that maybe Max will do 100 more races, i.e. he might do four more years. And um, at that point at the end of 2028 maybe that's time that he goes to drive other things because he certainly wants to and um you know the question i guess for max will be if he does secure multiple more drivers world championships which feels less likely now than it did before because next year is very much up in the air of course 2026 and beyond who knows who's going to have the fastest car but if max gets to like five or six then he might think, well, I kind of got to stay up and I to try and get the seven or the eight. But um, I don't know if Max really thinks like that. I think he just wants to do what he enjoys. And whether he ends as a four-time, a five-time, a six-time, whatever world champion, I think he'll be relatively satisfied with that. And he can always come back if he wants, right? Like, it's not impossible for Max to go and drive GT cars or drive, let's say, Le Mans or something for a couple of years, do some world endurance, drive all sorts of stuff. And then at some point, come back to F1 and try and give it a last hurrah. Alonso kind of did that for a couple of years. And also, Max makes it quite clear that the new regulations, whether they're enjoyable or not to drive, will have a factor to play in how he actually, you know, whether he decides to stay or not. And that's the interesting thing for like Hamilton or Alonso. They can drive the 2026 cars. If they're not good, if they have the problems that many of the teams and drivers think they will have, they can be like, all right, whatever, Formula One, the cars are in a terrible state. I'm just going to retire. Max isn't really, well, he can do the same thing but like he's much younger right and he's had far fewer Grand Prix in far greater cars at least greater regulations eras of cars shall we say in my opinion than um you know some of those other guys have got the Hamiltons the Alonso's have got to drive some far more fun and nimble and agile cars than Max has really got over his career oh but still Max has been in the sport for nearly 10 years himself so it's not like he's a young buck still Helmut Marco though gives his comments on the Red Bull situation says that they've basically brought downgrade to their car the debate continues on this whole asymmetric braking stuff. I guess we might see some comments on it over the coming days, but it's not like as a recording. We've seen any team principals come out and say, hey, Red Bull have been doing something dodgy, and now we're going to call them out on it. But, um, you know, whatever the case is, we've seen the average performance of their car over the last few rounds, and it's obviously not been good enough to consistently win. Marco, though, says, I'm optimistic. Recently, we were well beaten below our value. Qualifying will be particularly important in Zandvoort. Together with McLaren, we are certainly a among the favourites. But he also goes on to talk about the situation with their driver lineup, right? Because we know that Sergio Perez has been extended with the team. Well, he hasn't he got extended a while ago for another couple of years. But um they decided during the summer break they were not going to get rid of him after Spa, despite qualifying third and managing or actually end up second right after Max's good penalty and ending up eighth somehow. 
pretty embarrassing again, they still decided to stick with him. The rumour is that Carlos Slim and the Mexican sponsor boys, they came in and either told Red Bull themselves or told Liberty Media, hey, you're not getting rid of Checo, we need him for the sponsorship stuff and for the Mexican Grand Prix and for all these other factors, we are going to pay whatever it takes to make that happen. And we talked about that in some detail yesterday, but at the same time, if Red Bull's Constructors Championship is at risk, which it most certainly is, is Perez the man for that car? I don't think so as it stands. So therefore, what do you do? Because as Dana Ricardo says, Liam Lawson, who of course replaced Ricardo briefly during last season after Ricardo fractured his wrist at the Dutch Grand Prix, actually of all Grand Prix that it was, Lawson stepped in, did a very stellar job on that weekend and then followed it up with another couple of good performances such as in Singapore, where he of course famously knocked Verstappen and Perez out of Q2 at that race. And look, Lawson over those few races that he had was not quite as impressive as Yuki Tsunoda was, but given the circumstances was definitely very impressive and Ricardo says hey Lawson is definitely worthy of a place on the grid but there is pressure on not just Ricardo but also Perez given the situation and this is when Helma Marco makes this absolutely clear beyond belief because there's been a feeling that over the last couple of months Red Bull have talked to their own shell the stakeholders whatever and the feeling behind the scenes at Red Bull is they want to make the sister team back into a junior team again with the intention to actually develop younger talent into their program which makes sense when you've got exciting rookies like Hadjar or exciting young drivers such as Hadjar and Lindblad in the Red Bull system that they will likely want to consider to give super Formula drives and then potentially Formula 1 drives at some point. If you're keeping your seats preoccupied with veteran drivers like Dana Ricardo or even to some degree Yuki Tsunoda because despite yes he's developed a lot they've still not put him in the main team. So is there much point keeping Yuki around for too much longer? You can argue the merits of that, even though I think Yuki is, you know, I'd probably put him in the Red Bull, personally. But um, seemingly Christian Horner and the team disagrees. So there's been a push internally at Red Bull to make that a junior team again. And Liam Lawson apparently got a clause in his contract this year that said, hey, if we don't give you a seat for 25, you're free to walk away. And this is maybe one of the reasons why Audi, for example, are biding their time, because... If Lawson is not signed by RB, then Audi, Sauber, might look to give Lawson a drive. I think that would be would make a fair bit of sense, actually, given their situation going forwards. And I think Lawson's pretty good. I'm not quite convinced, personally, that he's as good as some people make him out to be. But um, I think we'll need to see him have more time in Formula 1 to get our answer on that. And Marco makes this absolutely emphatically clear. Next year, he will be sitting in one of our cars. So um, there's five drivers in the Red Bull situation. We've got to go down to four if this becomes true. And obviously over the last few rounds, there's only one way that it might look to go. Because one of the questions was, what if Max leaves to Mercedes, which was... An unlikely possibility, but a possibility nonetheless. Toto was trying to make it happen. Christian Order was trying to make it not happen. Adrian Newey was playing his part by leaving. Jonathan Wheatley maybe playing his part by leaving as well. But Max has apparently decided, no, he's going to stay. Mercedes have decided, okay, we're going to give the seat to Andrea Kimi Antonelli for next year to replace Lewis Hamilton. So Max is going to stay at the Red Bull, which makes sense from most angles. And he's obviously not going to be fired, is he, right? Like he's not going to be the driver making way for Liam Lawson. Then you look at the sister team, Yuki Tsunoda is re-signed. He's got the new deal, Yuki. So he's not going to be going anywhere. So then it really comes down between Dana Ricardo and, of course, Sergio Perez. The fascinating thing to me about the Ricardo situation is that they can't seem, it seems to me, Red Bull to make up their minds whether Ricardo is bad and therefore they've got to drop him for Lawson or whether he's good and therefore they've got to put him in the Red Bull for Perez. Like, it's funny that they're kind of torn between two sides. It's either is Ricardo better than Perez and therefore we should put him in or is he worse than Lawson and therefore we should get rid of him. Of course, the other possibility is just to say Lawson goes straight to Red Bull. That seems a bit ambitious and I don't think they would do it but it's not like Marco rules that possibility out he actually says he'll be sitting in one of our cars obviously you'd expect that to be the RB the junior the sister team but he doesn't make that absolutely clear and um you know it might not be impossible to read this as saying that that Red Bull seat is a possibility the real debate of course is if this is going to happen when is it going to happen how much more time do we have because Perez has 
10 more rounds until the end of the season, 10 rounds to maybe save his career, possibly four rounds to save his career. We've got, um, of course, it is Zanvoort, Monza, Singapore and Baku with the upcoming four rounds. Tracks, at least some of those tracks where Perez has gone pretty well in the past. If he doesn't perform there, there's in another big break before the final six rounds of the season. But those final six rounds includes the Mexican Grand Prix, which is where if the questions are true on the fact that Red Bull are getting paid a lot of money to keep Perez around, they're not going to want to let him go before then. So it seems like the decision is made that Lawson will come in, likely alongside Yuki. So that then raises the question as to whether it's going to be Ricardo or whether it's going to be Perez that makes way from that Red Bull family. And um, on recent form and trajectory, you've got to think it leads more Sergio Perez's way. But maybe the most likely possibility then as it stands is that Perez just gets the rest of the season through the Mexican Grand Prix and then is let go at the end of the year and Lawson would come in obviously to RB potentially and Ricardo would become Max's teammate at Red Bull. That seems a plausible situation as it stands but also that would be difficult for Perez because he's got a contract for the next two years and if they were to drop him at the end of the season of course he would have no chance of getting a Formula 1 drive anywhere for next year although those chances even as it stands are probably pretty slim regardless. So very much interested in your thoughts in the comments. This I thought was pretty interesting. Hamilton was asked to comment on the whole Bono situation. Peter Bono his race engineer and says like there was never any talks of Bono to go to Ferrari I wanted him to do whatever's best for him and his family we're always going to be in each other's life Bono is my brother he says a nice words I thought and um kind of saying look I never really tried to persuade him to come to Ferrari he needs to do what's best for him and whether Bono will take a back seat next year or whether he's going to maintain it doing race engineering for probably it would be Andrea Kimi Antonelli that is an interesting question a couple of interesting things to close out the video this is one McLaren are the only team this season to not have a single, well basically every single session they've got to Q3 of course they've had 14 rounds and on every single round both McLarens have made it to the third part of qualifying that's not been true always for Red Bull not been true always for Mercedes, for Ferrari as well and as you go further down you'll get Kick Sauber with only one Q3 appearance, Williams have three Alpine have five, Haas have six and then of course as it <laughs> might be expected goes up and up from there MotoGP, by the way, are getting bought by Liberty Media. This was known about for a while, and um, it's obviously a question of what this means for Formula 1, whether there's going to be crossover weekends, whether they're going to take the idea of doing sprints every round for MotoGP and make that happen in Formula 1 as well. Certainly hope that's not the case, but um, it's definitely interesting for the sport that they are selling a £630 million stake, Liberty Media, of Formula 1 to fund their MotoGP purchase. So um, raises some questions on how they think about these various properties but the Dutch Grand Prix is this weekend and it's likely again we're going to have some rain in play you guys probably remember last year's Grand Prix where rain was causing complete chaos at the start of the race we had more overtakes in one lap than like ever before because the race started people didn't know do we go to winters do we not do we stay out is the rain going to stop some people pitted first lap some people pitted second lap of course Red Bull were the ones to make the correct decision and um, you know it was absolutely absolute chaos at the start of last year's race which relatively quickly calmed down but it was fascinating for the first five or so minutes but we're expecting to see some sort of rain again probably for practice possibly for qualifying but um, as it stands a dry race is still expected so very much interested to your thoughts on all of this stuff in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and I'll see you next time